good morning, my beloved uh, learners. Uh, welcome back again uh, on our second lesson of uh, integration. Then you remember that uh, the first lesson, we were dealing with the indefinite integral. Then now uh, today, we will be continuing with the second less, with the second part of it, which will be our definite integrals. Then we're here. Our main uh, outcomes are very simple and very few. One, we shall be looking on one, how to evaluate or determine the definite integrals. Secondly, we shall be looking on the application of the rules to determine the magnitude or the size of an area where this area can be either included uh, by the curve and the x-axis, or it is between the curve, the x-axis, and the ordinates, uh, which is the x is equals to a and x is equals to b, where now our values of a and b are element of integers. Then those are our outcomes for this lesson. Then now if we are to look on what is a definite integral, we can define it as an integral where the range over which the integral has to be calculated is given. Then where now it will be between the range of A and B, and where now on this range, your value of A must be greater than the value of B. Your value of A must be greater than B. Then how now we, we need to understand the notations that are used on definite integral. Then where the first thing to show that now is an integral, it should be shown by this uh, symbol which looks like an, an S. Then so one can say this is a, f a very funny S. Then we call it now is, is an, an, an integral sign. But where on this integral sign, we have got our limits of integration, wherein we have got that value of A, which shows your lower limit of integration, and we have got our value of B, which, which is our upper limit of integration. But then now, what is to be integrated? There must be a function, which is f of x, which is the function which is to be integrated, wherein now from the lesson that we have learned uh, from the uh, indefinite integral, we call it now as an integrant. Then, but then where this can be integrated in terms of a variable, then where in our case here, our variable of integration is x. But please remember, like we said earlier uh, from our previous lesson, that our var variable of integration, it will not always be x. Any variable can be used. We can use the variable t, we can use the variable p or m or any variable. Please don't always memorize that now. We can use the variable x, okay? Then besides then those variables, the other important thing is check your range of, uh, of the limits, which is your a and b. What is it now? When you find the value for the integral, firstly, you must determine the integral before you do any substitution of your, of your a and b. Firstly, determine your integral using the rules that we have learned from the previous lesson. Then, if just to continue again, we can say, okay, a different integral results in a number. If maybe you are to compare, to compare the definite integral with indefinite integral. Remember, with indefinite integral, always then your integral will end up with an arbitrary constant, which can either be k or c. But in this case, if ever, you are dealing with the definite integrals, then your answer must result in a number. That's what makes the difference uh, between the definite integral and indefinite integral, where uh, now, uh, from the experience from examination or from the marking, you find that now some of the learners could not make the difference between the definite integral or uh, indefinite. Where they are supposed to calculate the uh, indefinite, then they are not adding C, but when they are supposed to determine 
or to evaluate the different integral they were adding C, which is vice versa of what is supposed to, to be done. Then therefore now, learn and to differentiate between, between the two types of integration. Then one, the first thing is determine your integral function. Then from there, after determining your integral, secondly, you must plug in or you must substitute in your upper limit into your integral. After plugging in or substituting your uh, upper limit, you must now substitute your lower limit. Then after getting uh, plugging in, then now you must subtract the lower limit from the upper limit and not vice versa. Where now we call our upper limit as f of b and our lower limit as f of a. Then now the value of your integral will be your f of b minus f of a, which is substitution of your upper limit minus the substitution of your lower limit. Then, like, let's look at this. We said now, define the integral, the, sorry, the definite integral. Uh, the definite integral, which is what we've shown the, uh, the, the notation, which denotes the difference of the value of f of x where x is equal to a and x is equal to b. Then while, like I'm, while I was uh, explaining, first thing for you to do is determine the integral. Secondly, substitute the upper limit, which is your substitution of the value of b, and then minus the value of your lower limit, which is your f of a. And that in fact, at the end, it will give you the value of f of b minus f of a. Meaning that now, sorry, even if maybe from the beginning you made a mistake of including the, uh, variable, the, the, the const, arbitrary constant, but then at the end when you substitute, at the end uh, that uh, arbitrary constant will be eliminated. It will no longer appear. Now we can see here on our final answer here, then we no longer have that uh, constant C, we no longer have it, if you have done it correctly. Then, uh, like we did with the, in, with, with the indefinite integral, now we are also going to do the very same with our definite integral. What is very key, you need to could understand your rules. No, firstly, the, what you did in the, in, in the in, in indefinite integrals, we had the standard uh, rules. Also here, you also need to could know what are the rules that we need to apply when we are dealing with the definite integrals. Rule number one, then it's suppose you are given a multiplication by a constant. Like we're saying here, then integral of k dx, but then now try to look in this case here. Then we are not given the function. We are only given the constant k, no function there. We don't have any t of x, uh, k of x, whatever. We only have got the constant. In that case, if you are given a constant, then your integral will now be k, which is your constant, into the upper limit minus the lower limit. That is only if you are given a constant and no function. But then now, let us try to compare uh, number one with number two, rule number two. Well, now with rule number two, still here there is a multiplication of a constant. We have got a constant k, but on this constant k, it is multiplied by a function f of x. That's what makes the difference between the first rule and the second rule. Now, if ever your constant is multiplied by a function, yet we have, we have got two things that we are supposed to do. Firstly, we are going to factor out the constant k. After factoring it out, then now we do the formal uh, integration process that we have learned in our first lesson. We do the normal uh, integration process, then which will be like if you are given x to the exponent of n, 
then the integral of this, uh, of x to the exponent of n, in terms of x, this will be your x to the exponent of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. This is the standard rule that we need to remember, to always remember, that we are going to apply throughout. Then in rule number 2, our rule number 2, we call it a zero integral. What do we mean by the zero integral? It is, it is called the zero integral where now, after we have done all the processes of substituting your upper limit and your lower limit, like maybe before we, we go there, when you try to compare here on this, you will find that now your lower limit is A and your upper limit is A, meaning that now in this case here, both our lower and upper limit are the same. Then it definitely, if the lower and the upper limit are the same, when we do the subtractions, then it means we are going to find it to be equals to zero. And wherein, in actual sense, then there is no area between A and A. We can't, we can't have it because it is the same point. And if we're talking of the area, then we must measure it between two points. Then say from point B to C or from point A to B. But then in this case here, then it is from the same point. Then therefore now we don't have it. Then which will give you equals to zero then where if you must you have mastered your rule then and when you are given a problem in an examination by just merely through inspection there won't be anything wrong if we you don't do even the normal but you can maybe also look in terms of the marks if the mark is just only one or two then it means you don't have to do any mathematical calculations because you know the rule then you can just get it through inspection that now here yeah, the answer is zero because you know that now if ever you are determining your integral and where the lower and the upper limit are the same, then the, your answer is zero. Then let's look on the next rule of which we call it the negation or the reverse, the reverse uh, interval. When do we experience this? When do we experience this? It's if ever you find that now the value of A is less than the value of B. Remember from the beginning in, in the introduction, I said in a normal situation, your value of A must be greater than the value of, sorry, it must be less than, sorry for, for that one. Your value of A must be less than your value of B. But then in this case here, you find that now your value of A, which is your lower limit, it's greater than your upper limit. Then now you can reverse that process in order to get an appropriate value of, uh, of the area. You can reverse that process by saying, okay, uh, instead of working with the uh, a, which is greater than the value of B, then now you put in a negative first, and then now you swap your upper and the lower limit. That's why now, like, if we look here on our given uh, integral, we have, instead of A here, we are starting with B, and we end up our upper limit there, it's A, which is not according to the rule. Then now, to reverse that process, we must now put in the negative sign. That's why now we have negative of uh, the lower limit of A and the upper limit of B, as expected. Remember always, it means when you are given a problem, you must always check your lower limit and your upper limit, wherein your value of A should be your lower limit and your value of B should be your upper limit. Then uh, rule number four, this is exactly the same as what we did uh, with our indefinite integral, wherein now if we are given the sum or the difference of two functions, then now we determine the integral of separate functions. Then we don't have to waste time on that one. And then now the same applies to the decomposition. Okay, if we look at the decomposition or adding of the intervals, when does it this happen? 
This happens in the situation where, like, here you have your graph. Uh, this is your y. This is your x. And then now you find that uh, we have the area between this. We have got this part of the function of the graph, which is above the x-axis. And we also have this part here, which is below the x-axis. Then we're in now here. We have got the first point here, which is your value of A, your value of B, and your value of C. We have got three points here instead of two points. In that case, then now we can apply the decomposition of this. Then which will be now, firstly, we find the integral between point A and point B. Then from there, we find the integral between or the area between point B and point C. That is where now this rule applies. Wherein now your value of B must be less than C, but it must be greater than A. Now, before maybe we can start looking on the examples, firstly, I will remind you again that uh, you need to have done the revision of all the standard integrals that we have learned in our first lesson of the indefinite integrals, where number one, it's your main, which is the integral of kx to the exponent of n in terms of d of, uh, of x, it will be kx to the exponent of n plus one, all divided by n plus one, then plus c, but wherein now your value of n should not be equal to negative one to avoid the situation where this becomes invalid. Because for any fraction which is divided by zero, that is uh, mathematically wrong. Then you must always remember that. And again, if we're given the fraction, then for the fraction always remember, try to check as to whether try to check if ever, then your fraction, can it be converted to be in the form of one over x? If it can be converted in terms of one over x, you must always remember that uh, the integral of one over x by dx, this is equals to lin x. Then just only, you don't only have to look at on the fraction. Firstly, check as to whether is your fraction, can it be written in the form of one over x? If it is written in the term of one over x, then you can apply lin of x, the logarithm of x. Then the last one, it's k, sorry, integral of ka to the exponent of nx. Then this should be equal to your ka to the exponent of nx divided by and lin of A. Then these are the ru standard rules that we have then done in our previous lesson that you must always remember and then you are going to apply them in both indefinite integrals and definite integrals. Then now let's look on the examples where we can apply uh, these are uh, rules that I've been uh, explaining. Rule number one, it's here we are given evaluate the definite integral of five with the limit of a is equals to zero and b is equals to one. When try to look on this one, firstly check whether here we've got five. You we know that no five is a constant, but then is this constant multiplied by the function? The answer is no. If we don't have the function, then therefore, which rule do we apply? We apply the rule of saying now, then that will be the constant multiplied by, we said this will be k into b minus a, because we don't have the function, it's only the constant. Wherein now here, your constant, you are given it's five, and your value of b, it's one, and your value of a, it's zero. Then therefore, now your answer will be equals to five into one, which is equals to five. And then this proof what we have said earlier on the introduction that now 
then the answer for the definite integral, it must always give you a number, not a function. Then let's look on at example number two. Example number two is now the application, the multiplication of the constant and the function. Here we've got the constant three and the function x squared. Then with the limits a is equals to negative one and b is equals to two. What do we do on that? We said if we have this negative one, two, three, x squared, dx, we have got the constant multiplied by the function. Firstly, you, we said you factor out your constant, which is three, then you will remain with your function, x squared by dx. Then now, from there now, here we said we have got our limit of negative one, there we have two. Then now here, our main thing is to determine the integral of x squared by applying the rules that we have learned on indefinite integral, where now this will be equals to three. Then if we are to apply the rule here, then your answer should give you x cubed divided by three. And here, because now we are dealing with the definite integrals, we no longer add c, we don't add it. Then now, but now if we are to, to multiply three by x to the exponent of three over three, then this will cancel each other and then we remain only with x to the exponent of three, which is your answer for the integral. But then now, this, we still have to apply the limits. Here it's negative one and here it's two. Then we said now we subtract the values where we substitute the lower limit from the upper limit. Then now this is going to give you uh, our value of our upper limit is two. Then this is going to be two to the exponent of three minus negative one to the exponent of three. We have substituted our upper limit and we subtract our lower limit to the exponent of three will give you the value of eight minus, but then now negative one to the exponent of three will give you the value of negative one. Then this will be now eight plus one, which is equals to nine. This is how you should calculate it. Firstly, check if there's a constant, multiply the function, then where there's a function, you apply your normal uh, integration procedures. Then let's look at example number three. Then of uh, zero integral, we said we get the zero integral wherein if your value of A and your value of B are equal. Like in this case here, our value of A and B are all is equals to two. Then now uh, from inspection, then you can automatically set down your value of the integral was going to be zero. But now, if say you are not sure of the inspection. Okay, sorry. Then we can apply the rules. Then there we are having three divided by x. But I said, check as to whether can you manipulate the given function into the fraction of one over x, yes. This one, we can change this. Then this can be changed as three multiplied by the integral of one over x dx. We have changed the fraction of three over x into one over x. Then now in this case, wherein now you know that the integral of one over x is equal to lin x. Then now this will be equal to three lin x and where our limit are two and two. Then if we are to apply the rule, then this is going to be three lin of two minus three lin of two. Then 
where you can even use your calculator. Then if you are not really sure, then you could say that, okay, this will be three uh, multiplied by your, your lean function. And then, which is going to give you uh, zero point, sorry, this, it's two, zero point seven nine minus two point zero point seven nine, which will be giving you the value of zero. But then now all these calculations, if you know the rule, then it will not be necessary. It will just be the waste of time. Then let's look at rule number three, sorry, number four. Then which is the negation or the reverse in, in, in interval. Wherein I said, we apply this only in the situation where you find your value of A, it's greater than your value of B. Where under normal circumstances, your value of A should be less than the value of B. Then now in this case here, uh, four is greater than two. Then therefore, to do that now, we must now introduce the negative sign so that now we must swap the value of A and the value of B. Then now, the, this will be now the integral of uh, four, lower limit of two and the upper limit of four of the function two minus X. Then the normal procedure, you find the, firstly, evaluate the integral of two minus X, which will give you two X minus X squared over Two, then you do the substitutions. Then where if you are doing the correct substitutions using your calculator, it, I think I will suggest or recommend that now, always you must practice how to use your calculator so that now you must do the substitution correctly and then your answer will give you two. Then now here we are coming to the example number five, very interesting one then of which I'm going to comment again on this when we go to the areas. Then let's look at this here. Here we are to determine the, the integral of x to the exponent of three by dt, then with starting from negative two to two. And then now, when you are doing your, your proper processes, integration processes, then now, uh, if we're saying from negative two to two, from the number line, it means here we are starting, say, at this point, which is negative two, there is zero and two. We are now to find the integral starting from this point up to this point. And look what is going to happen. Then we are saying we need the integral of uh, x to the exponent of three dt. If it is stretching between the two, then now you must split this into from negative two to zero and from zero to two. You must split it. Then now from there now you determine your proper integral, then this is going to be equals to x to the exponent of four over four, starting from negative two to zero plus the very same of uh, x to the exponent of four over four, but now starting from zero to positive two from that set of interval. Then now uh, when you do your calculations, your substitutions, then it will give you the value of zero. But remember from the outcomes, we said we are going to apply the rules wherein now in order to determine the area between the curve and the x-axis or between the curve and the ordinates. But then now if we were to calculate the area, can we get an area of zero? If say here, like initially what I've done. Okay, in this case here, our graph is like this from this here, we can say we have area number one and we have area number two. But then now if you are to compare the answer that you get here, where we said it's equal to zero, and now you compare with the graph, 
with the graph, it can show you that now here, we have got a definite area here of area one and the area two. Then therefore it means the two do not tally. Then now, but let us leave it here. Then now we are going to show this again when we go to the graphs to show that now, then what exactly are we supposed to do if we find to the situation wherein when you determine the integral, we get zero. But where in actual sense, then the area cannot be zero. What needs to be done? Then just hang on. Then uh, number six, then this is the same as what we did uh, with the indefinite integral. The only difference is that here, yeah, we are having the, uh, the limits. Then if ever you are having the polynomial, we said before you do any process, firstly check if ever, if there's a fraction, can you factorize it, uh, can you simplify that fraction? And if it's a product of factors, can you multiply the factors out? And then now, before you can find the, the integrand. In this case here, we've got x squared minus nine over x minus three. Before you do any substitution, firstly factorize this, wherein x squared minus nine can be factored into x minus three plus uh, x plus three. Then these are your factors. Then this is divided by x minus three, where at the end, this and this will cancel out and then you remain only with x plus three. It means now your function to be integrated is x plus three. Then when we integrate it, this will be x squared over two plus three x. Then you do the substitutions, which will give you the value of 27 over two. Where I hope at this time, no one is still struggling then with the substitutions. And then, but what is very key, just as a reminder, make sure that now we start by substituting with the upper limit and we end up with the lower limit. Don't do it vice versa. Where now you start with the lower limit and then you end up with the upper limit. Otherwise, you are going to have an incorrect calculations. Then the last example is involving the product uh, of factors. Like I've indicated before that now, you need to multiply out. Then, and you do the formal procedures. Then it could save time. I think by now you, you, always, you already understand this. Then after you have learned how to deal or to evaluate your definite integrals, then your second uh, assignment now will be, how do we determine the area under the curve or the area between the curve and the ordinates? Like the type of the functions that are normally, that, that we're normally going to use at our level, then expect to find the straight line, which is de defined by y squared to mx plus c, your parabola, your hyperbola, exponential, and the cubic functions. Then in all of this, your, what is required from you is to be able to identify the given function. Then the, our CAPS document says, uh, at this level, you will not be required to draw or to sketch any graph according to the policy, then it means the examiner must provide you with a sketch. Your responsibility is to be able to identify what type of a sketch is this. Is it a parabolic function? Is it hyperbolic function? That is what is needed from you. Then, if ever you are required to determine the area under the cave, there are these very simple rules that you need to know. Number one, I said, study the sketch that will be provided, whether is it a parabolic function, is it a cubic function. Secondly, integrate that given function according to the standard rules that you have learned. Thirdly, substitute the upper limit, substitute the lower limit, and then now you subtract the values of the lower limit from the upper limit. That is calculate your f of b minus f of a and where your answer must be a number and not a function. If your answer is a function, it means somewhere, somehow you got it wrong. And other very key issue here that you must make that now you master it in order not to lose not even a single mark 
if we are to determine an area, your area must be a positive quantity. An area cannot be negative. But then now, through your calculations, somewhere, somehow, you are going to come across where you got, you find that now, the value of your integral uh, is, after the substitution and everything, you are getting your answer to be negative. If you get negative, what does it mean? That is not to say that your area is negative, say, nine square meters, because it is impossible to have a negative area. The negative nine square units simply mean that now your graph is lying below the x-axis. That's just only the interpretation of that negative. Then at the end, you must draw the conclusion that now your area is equals to nine square units, for example. Please always remember that. Then what's other notes that you need to take care? One, I've emphasized your definite integral. If you get it to be negative, this implies that now the area is below the x x, x, x then, but your area must remain positive. That one is a master. Then number two, if the answer of a different of a is zero, like we have done with example number five, it is impossible that you can find that there are those two areas, but then now which can give you zero. That simply means that now you need to could split. You need to could uh, determine the area of the first part and you determine the area of the second part and you add them. You add them. Then lastly, it's according to the exam guideline of 2018, page eight, sketch must be provided. Then you will never be expected to draw any sketch. Or even yourself, do not redraw the sketch you will be wasting your time that you need to finish your exam paper. Then now, the first example here, it's if the graph of h of x is equal to negative 2x plus 1 is shown on the graph. There, like I've said, sketch must be given. If the sketch is given, what are you supposed to do? Firstly, identify what type of a sketch is this. From the function there, that tells you that now this is a straight line. Secondly, after identify the type of the function, Determine the limits. Determine the limits, the, your lower limit and your upper limit. And from here, you can really see that now this area, it's starting from negative two and it's ending at positive two. Meaning your value of A is negative two and your value of uh, B is two. Then therefore now, it means if we are to determine the area, Firstly, is to put this information into the integral form. This must be represented as negative 2x plus 1 dx, where your minimum is negative 2 and your upper limit is 2. From there, second rule says you must integrate. You must integrate this. Then this will be your negative two as a constant, x squared divided by two plus x, wherein this and this will cancel, then you remain only with negative x squared plus x. But then this should be integrated from negative two and two. Then now, after you have determined your integral, now you can subtract the lower limit from the upper limit. Then now this will be your, you can do this, negative, our lower limit here is negative two. Then this will be negative into negative two all squared plus negative two minus the very same of negative of two squared plus two, wherein this will be negative two squared is four, which will be negative four minus two, and minus, this will be negative four plus two. Then when you do all these substitutions, oh, sorry, my, I made a mistake there. I couldn't see then it's not two, but four. 
then this is fine. Okay, let me just cancel this. And then it's four negative two, negative two x plus one dx. Then where this is going to give you negative x squared plus x, all from negative two and four. Then which becomes negative of negative four squared plus plus four, then minus into negative of negative two all squared plus into negative two. And to do all this, you are getting to find that now your area will be equals to negative six. If it is negative six, I said, we don't have the area of, okay. we don't have the area of a negative. Our area must always be positive. Then, therefore, your area must be equals to six square units. Your area must be equals to six square units. You ignore that negative, just showing you that now your area is below the x axis. Then I'll try, then number two, <coughs> sorry. Number two, it's you are given the sketch alongside represents the graph of the function defined by h of x, it's x into five plus five x. Then like we did with the uh, indefinite integral, where there's a product of factors. Before anything, multiply it out. X is equal to, sorry, it's five, it's X into five plus three X. When you multiply out, this is going to give you five X plus three X squared. Then from there now you must find the integral of five uh, X. Then this is going to give you 5x squared over 2 plus 3x cubed over 3. Then this will simplify then into 5 over 2x squared plus x cubed. But what is our limit? From the graph here, it is showing that now it's starting from negative 1.5 is from negative 1 and it is ending at 0 0.5. Then uh, because now we are done with this, from then now is the substitution, where you substitute from the upper limit into the whole function, minus the substitution of your lower limit. Well, then with some of these uh, calculations, then I will skip. Then now uh, when you do the substitutions, uh, that is where I've ended up there, it is going to give you negative three over four. Then like I've said earlier, negative just showing that now your graph is below, sorry, your, 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 your area is below the x axis, but the area must be positive where your area must be three over four. Then number three, then let me try to move to number five because both number two and three, they are almost the same. Then now, what is the importance of this example number five? If you remember, uh, on when we are evaluating, uh, we have where we found that now, when you got the, your value of the integral to be zero, what do we do there? Then now, like in this case here, we cannot find, we cannot accept where now your integral is zero. Let us revise what we've done earlier there. We have this function of x to the power of three. Our limit is negative two and two by dx. Then wherein if you are to integrate this, this will be x to the exponent of four over four. And we have negative two and two. And if we do the substitution, this will be two to the exponent of four minus, 
sorry, this is over 4, minus negative 2 to the exponent of 4 over negative 2. And when you do the calculations, this is going to give you 0. But you look now on the sketch. Is it correct? Is it true that we can say the area here can be 0? No, it cannot be 0. Because you can see on the sketch here that now we have got this part. Then this part is not 0. We have got an area of this portion here. And we also have got the area of this portion. Then therefore now this solution here cannot be accepted. If it is not accepted now, what should we do in order to consol consolidate these wrong calculations versus the reality what you see here? Then now in that case here, we must now determine, we must now split this function into two. Okay, then let us move here. Then if I am to redraw this, which means I have something like this, then we're at this point here, it's negative 2. This is 0. And this is 2. It means now I should split this between negative 2 to 0 and 0 to 2. You must now determine the area of this part, which is from negative 2 to 0. And again, you determine the area from 0 to 2. At the end, we add them. And then let us see what's going to happen. Then, OK, this is what I've already shown that now. OK, when we did, we are getting our area to be 0, which is not correct. But then now, if we split, if we split them, then you are going to find that now your first area is going to be 4 units. Then let us look at how are we getting this. Firstly, let's get the area between negative 2 to 0. And then there we said, this means this will be your x to the exponent of 4 over 4 dx. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry, let me delete this. Sorry. This is x to the exponent of 4 over 4 to be evaluated from negative 2 to 0 as our first part. Then this will be meaning that now this will be 0 to the exponent of 4 over 4 minus negative 2 to the exponent of 4 over 4. This is going to give you 0 divided by any number is equal to 0 minus negative 2 to the exponent of 4 is 16. 16 divided by 4 is equal to 4. Therefore, we can say area number 1 is equal to 4 square units. Then, now let's look again the area of the second part, then which will be x to the exponent of 4 over 4. But then this one is to be determined from 0 to 2. To two. Then this will be calculated as 2 to the exponent of 4 over 4 minus 0 to the exponent of 4 over 4. This will give you 2 to the exponent of 4 is 16 over 4. This is equals to 4 minus 0, which is equals to 4. Then therefore, Area 2 is also equals to 4. But then now, here we need the area of the entire function. Then our conclusion will be area now will be equals to area 1 plus area 2, which will give us 4 plus 4, which is equals to 8 square units. That is very, very critical in the situation where you now when to man the area, it's giving you zero, which is impossible. The area cannot be zero or, 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 or between the two. It means there is something wrong. Then now you must split the two. Then from there, uh, I've given you the 
the, the practice example, because now with mathematics, we simple said now, then it should be practice, practice, practice. Then for them, I've given you these practice exercises covering all the rules and probably all the functions that we are supposed to deal uh, at our grade 12, where the first one it's, is a straight line, and the second one will be the cubic function that we, you know this, but then now here, it is between one and A. Then you are going to do these exercises on your own. Then example number three is where you are given the parabolic function. Number four is an hyperbolic function. And, okay, then I've ended up on the parabolic function, but then always then now, it should be, what is very important? It's master all the standard rules. Secondly, you cannot deal with uh, integration if you do not know your exponential loss. It means your exponential loss remains important. Then, if ever you are dealing with the indefinite integrals, you must add the arbitrary constant C. But if you are dealing with the definite integral, your answer must be a number. Again, if you are to calculate the area, you must always remember your area cannot be negative. It must always be a positive uh, quantity. And lastly, you must master all the notations. Notations for those, for all, either in definite integral and also for the definite integrals. Then my motivation is in life, in order to succeed, you must decide while others are delaying to decide. Don't wait for somebody to, uh, somebody to, de to decide on yourself. Always have a positive mind to decide. Begin while others are still thinking, can I do it or must I not do it? Don't pro procrastinate any of your decisions. You must always work hard while others are wish to save time. Then don't save time. I mean, don't waste the time. Always work. Persist while others quit. What I've learned in my life is you must have that spirit of perseverance. And don't quit. Study through and through while others are sleeping. Because with uh, meds, technical meds, then you cannot expect to get the answers without practicing. Practicing is the language of mathematics. Then this brings us to the end of everything. And I thank you so much. No Liwu. Then with the words of our greatest leader, it is in your hands to create a better world for all who live in it. Be productive to the community where you are, you are living. In the school where you are attending, please learn to assist your other colleagues so that now your, the greater community can achieve, not only yourself. Thank you so much.